could you please tell us what is a black hole? So a black hole is a region of space-time um, where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, uh, not even light. And in, in any relativistic theory, and in particular in general relativity, information can only propagate at a finite speed, and the maximum speed in which information propagates is the speed of light. So if there is a region of space-time in which gravity is so strong that it pulls even light and it keeps it within this region, then whatever happens in this region cannot be communicated to the outside world. So once you fall into a black hole, then you are doomed. It's a favourite theme of science fiction mm -hmm. um, to think about what would happen as you came close to a black hole or perhaps even passed over the horizon. Um, what do we know about those situations and what do you think might happen? Well, yeah, I mean, a horizon is, is physical in the sense that it's, it, it's, a, it's a place uh, beyond which light can no longer escape. So it's physical. Um, now, what's important about a uh, horizon is that it's, it, likes, it acts like a one-way like one membrane. It's a soft surface, right? So you can just cross it, and you wouldn't even notice that you've that you've crossed the horizon. It's not like like a surface of a star where you, you know just you know run into a star, you hit and you burn. It's not like that in principle. There's some debate about whether indeed it's a soft surface or not. Um, so it's not a completely settled issue, but um, it seems according to general relativity alone, then it should be a soft surface. And this is in fact one of the experimental signatures that uh, astronomers are looking for in terms of detecting black holes. When you see gas falling into a black hole, then if the horizon wasn't a soft surface, then you would expect there should be emission of, of, of uh, X-rays as the gas falls, and this has not been seen. So it's a soft surface, so if you, you can just cross it, and in principle, if the black hole is large enough, then you wouldn't feel anything until it's too late. Now what happens is that close to a black hole, because gravity is strong, uh, time runs slower for you, so even if you could stay there, you wouldn't feel much, um, but if you compare your clock with a, an observer far from a black hole, then you would see that you haven't aged uh, that much, whilst he, he or she has become much older. Uh, but other than that, uh, you'll be perfectly fine. Now if you cross it, um, then general relativity tells us that uh, once you are inside the black hole, you are essentially doomed. Uh, and you will eventually hit the singularity and you will be destroyed. So it's not something I would advise you to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember seeing a picture, I think Kip Thorne drew, that you would kind of become stretched along one kind of mm -hmm. direction, yes. spaghettification. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, this, is, this has to do with, with, with curvature, because curvature is large. So if the black hole is small, then the difference between curvature uh, at your head and at your feet is so large that you get stretched like a spaghetti. It's like this tidal effect. But if the black hole is very big, then the gravitational field is very uniform. Even though it's strong, it's very uniform. Um, so the difference between gravity at your head and at your feet wouldn't be that large, so therefore you could approach the horizon of a very big black hole and not feeling anything at all. So it's only when the black holes are small that the difference between the gravity at head and your feet is what uh, leads to this spaghettification mm -hmm. that Kip Thorne uh, mm -hmm. talked about. But if you go to the center of the galaxy where the black hole is big, then you can get very close and you'll be perfectly fine. So what about really, really tiny black holes? I mean, you probably remember when they started off the LHC some years mm -hmm. ago, people were saying it was going to create all these tiny black holes everywhere, which would be terrible and dangerous. I mean, A, do tiny black holes get created in particle accelerators? <laughs> and B, are they in any way dangerous? Um, well, black holes, or the black holes that we know, these are microscopic objects. Um, but of course, we know that nature at these sort of uh, tiny scales is governed by quantum mechanics. So when you combine quantum mechanics with general relativity, then Stephen Hawking uh, very famously discovered that black holes uh, radiate and gradually evaporate. This process is very slow for big black holes. 
But if the black holes are small, then what happens is that the smaller the black hole is, the hotter it is. That is to say, the hotter the radiation that it emits uh, is. So as it becomes smaller, the black hole, perhaps, um, uh, it's a bit surprising, but the smaller it becomes and the hotter it is, so the faster it emits radiation, and then when it becomes you know, very, very tiny, it finally would explode uh, into a burst of, of radiation. This was the danger that people thought that would, could happen at the LHC, because if you create a black hole, then maybe you know, it will not have time to evaporate, because it will suck you know, matter, and then eventually swallow uh, the LHC. I mean, some people say, well, if, as long as it swallows France, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some colleagues saying that, but it could swallow the whole Earth, but whatever. We think that this is not dangerous at all, because the energies that we, that we uh, manage to get at the LHC are small, very small, in fact compared to the energies of cosmic rays that have been hitting the Earth for billions uh, of, of years. So the upper layers of the atmosphere are constantly being bombarded by super high energy cosmic rays. These are essentially high uh, elementary particles, like the ones that we collide in the LHC, and we haven't seen anything strange happening in the upper layers of the atmosphere. The Earth has been sitting here for about four and a half billion years, um, so we think that producing a black hole at the LHC, if it happened, um, wouldn't be dangerous. And like I said, the experimental evidence it indicates that these models uh, are not favored. So we have nothing to fear from black holes. We have nothing to fear from black holes. <laughs>